Hi and welcome back to Sansamed. In this video we'll continue our journey throughout the endocrine system and we'll start off by talking about the hypothalamus. We'll discuss what it does, its anatomy physiology and the hypothalamic nuclei, the hormones they produce and their effects. Now if the pituitary gland was the master endocrine gland in the body, that makes the hypothalamus the chief master gland because it releases the releasing hormones required for the pituitary gland to work. And in this way, it can regulate the metabolic processes around the body. And through its role in the autonomic nervous system, it will control functions such as body temperature, hunger, thirst, satiety, and circadian cycles, and many other functions. But before we talk about the physiology and the hypothalamic nuclei layout, let's talk about its anatomy. So on the picture here to the left, what you will see is a sagittal cross-section of the brain. Now here you have the prefrontal cortex, and this part of the brain is responsible for cognitive behavior, personality expression, and it's also important for decision making. The corpus callosum, which we see here, or the colossal commissure, it's an interhemispheric uh, connection, so it connects the two hemispheres. Here we can see the temporal lobe down here, which is important for uh, auditory perception. And on it, we see the hippocampus together with the amygdala, which both are important for memory. Here we see the cerebellum and the cerebellar vermis, which is important for postures and uh, locomotion. And this blue big structure here is the thalamus, which you know to be the relay center of the brain. And then logically, the hypothalamus would be situated just beneath it. As the name indicates, hypo meaning under thalamus, and this is the thalamus. Now, embryologically, the hypothalamus comes from the ventral diencephalon. So this structure here to the right here is the diencephalon. The ventral means anterior, so the ventral diencephalon. If you remember, the diencephalon together with the telencephalon, which formed the cerebrum, came from an embryologic structure known as the proencephalon. Other structures would be the mesencephalon, which would form the midbrain, and the rhombencephalon, which essentially would form the hindbrain, so the brainstem, so to speak, the pons, dula oblongata. And also it would form the cerebellum. So let's talk about the hypothalamic nuclei. This is a medial view of the hypothalamus. Here you would have the posterior region, and this would be the anterior region right here. And this is another view from the side. Uh, here you have the pituitary gland, which is here on this picture. Here, this would be the anterior pituitary gland. This would be the posterior one. This is the infundibulum. Here you would have the pons, which is a brainstem structure. And here you would have the various hypothalamic nuclei viewed from another angle, so to speak. So let's start off with the first nuclei. This would be this light blue nuclei here, the posterior nuclei, which is logically located in the posterior aspect of the hypothalamus. Now, this nuclei is responsible for increasing the temperature in the body. Now, normally it's inhibited by this light red or pink nuclei, which is the anterior nuclei, also known as the anti rise center. But when the body is faced with hypothermia, then the inhibitions would be lifted. And so posterior nuclei would then work to increase the temperature. Now, the way it does this is by shivering. So the muscles around the vital organs would start to shake, and this will lead to increased energy expenditure. And if you ever take in a chemistry or physics class, you know that the more energy a system uses, the more heat it produces. So when faced with a temperature below 37 degrees Celsius or it's 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, this center would be activated. Now, the way the anterior nuclei decreases temperature is simply by decreasing the basic metabolic rate in the body. So, which hormone is responsible for increasing the basic metabolic rate in the body? Well, that's the thyroid hormones, the T3 and T4 form. And so this nuclei would act to inhibit the TRH, or thyrotropin-releasing hormone. The thyrotropin-releasing hormone, as we'll see soon, 
what it does is that it goes through anterior pituitary gland and releases another hormone which is known as the thyroid stimulating hormone and this hormone would then go to the thyroid gland and uh, stimulate the productions of these t3 and t4 uh, hormones and they would in turn increase so if you inhibit the release of these trh then you would decrease the production of the thyroid hormone and in that sense you will decrease the energy expenditure consequently you will decrease the temperature another region we see here is the preoptic region now the preoptic region is responsible for a couple of different things but most noticeably this would be to increase blood pressure and thermal regulation thermal regulation through its activity on both the posterior and anterior nuclei and blood pressure it would do through generating thirst the medial preoptic region however contains a couple of cells collectively known as the sexual diamorphic nuclei now these cells are important for the releasement of a specific releasing hormone known as the gonadotropic releasing hormone this hormone as we'll see later will go to the anterior pituitary gland and release LH and FSH. LH would be the luteinizing hormone which in females triggers ovulation and in males it produces testosterone through stimulating the Leydig cells. The FSH, the follicle stimulating hormone as the name suggests would stimulate the follicular growth in the ovaries and in males uh, it would lead to spermatogenesis. Now if we continue our journey throughout the hypothalamic nuclei we'll see that the supraoptic nuclei located here and the paraventricular nuclei located here are important for water balance and this is because they contain magnocellular nuclei or cells that produce a hormone known as ADH. Now this hormone with another name is called vasopressin and this hormone is very important for water reabsorption in the collecting tubules so this is the way they regulate and this hormone are secreted through a tract or neuronal endings that end in the posterior pituitary gland and are directly released from there we'll see that shortly too uh, another hormone that they produce is the oxytocin Oxytocin is mostly known for uterine contraction, so during labor it facilitates it and also induces lactation. Another nuclei we'll see is the suprachiasmatic nuclei. It's called so because it lies above the optic chiasm. So this is the optic chiasm here and here is the suprachiasmatic nuclei. Now what this nuclei does is that it controls circadian cycle, so it induces sleep in a sense. And the way it does this is that it stimulates the pineal gland to secrete omelatonin, which induces sleep. Another nuclei we see here is the dorsal medial nuclei. And this nuclei is important for the GI tract in the sense that it increases the peristalsis. The ventral medial nuclei works in uh, opposite with the lateral nuclei. Whereas the lateral nuclei will induce hunger and thirst, the ventromedial nuclei will induce satiety. Now in short, how this works is that the body is in homeostasis, it's in balance all the time. So let's say the glucose levels in the blood drops and then this will send stimulatory signals to the lateral nuclei to induce hunger. So you would wanna eat. And if the opposite happens, if the glucose levels are high, let's say after you eat a big cake, then that would induce the ventral medial nuclei to induce satiety. The mammillary bodies, which we see here and which we see here, are important for feeding. Another nuclei that we see here is the mammillary bodies, shown here and here. Now the mammillary bodies have a function in feeding, but most importantly, they are known for their role in memory formation. The last nuclei we'll see on our list here is going to be the arcuate nuclei. Now the arcuate nuclei will release a couple of important hormones and these will be growth hormone, releasing hormone and dopamine. Now dopamine is also known as prolactin inhibiting factor. What this means is that it will inhibit prolactin release from the anterior pituitary gland and growth hormone, releasing hormone will 
stimulate the release of growth hormone from the anterior pituitary gland. Other releasing factors will come off the paraventricular nuclei. These would be CRH or corticotropic releasing hormone, which will stimulate the release of ACTH in the anterior pituitary gland. ACTH will then go to adrenal gland and stimulate the release of glucocorticoids such as cortisol. The other hormone it produces here would be TRH, pyrotropin releasing hormone. Now pyrotropin releasing hormone, as we mentioned before, would go to the anterior pituitary gland and stimulate the release of thyroid stimulating hormone, which then would go to the thyroid gland to produce thyroxine. Another hormone produces here is also somatostatin. Now somatostatin will inhibit the release of growth hormone, releasing hormone from the arcuate nuclei. And also it will inhibit the release of TSH from the anterior pituitary gland.